Welcome to Suppose, a podcast where authors discuss the extraordinary. I'm James B. Hassel. And I'm Sarah Jean. And this week, the topic is Suppose, Morality is Subjective, or Objectivity is a Myth. Okay. I don't know which one I'm going to go with, but they're, they're very related. This is why I just threw them both in. It may be well, my... It may be my Stanley Kubrick title, where I just keep the or. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove, or. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's and. And, yeah. And also or. Rather, rather, rather than or. Mm-hmm. So. I think this case would be the or, and it's it means and. <laughs> Yeah. Like one makes the other. Mm -hmm. Because I, I didn't actually think we would be agreement on this, but <laughs> <laughs> I expected you to argue that morality could be or is objective. I th no. Hmm. I oh, okay. Well, maybe maybe I, and there's a possibility that we're looking at this differently Possibly. from definition. So I think that morality um, is defined by culture, and I don't see as not not everything. Like I think murder is fairly universally reviled, not always, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's made to be justified because it's culture. Um, and culture, I don't see as being objective. <laughs> no, I don't think culture is objective either, which is. Because I don't think anything is objective, which is weird, even saying it. Okay. No, I can see that. I think that if there is objectivity in anything, it's only on accident. Yeah. I don't even think it's that. It's just I don't think our brains are capable of objectively seeing or saying or perceiving anything. Yeah. I, we, I heard this today um, that we're not really objective. We're just rationalizing. Mm-hmm our whatever the hell we're doing quirks or yeah decisions or i heard part of that today too it did had, you uh-huh it was oh, okay. i heard it on it was a basis of the kevin spacey thing that's been happening oh i don't know if you've been keeping up on that i saw it but i didn't look into it hey right. for anyone else living under a rock because I don't know how you escape this news. I've tried to escape all news, and I couldn't escape this news. Well, you escaped the other big news. Yeah. That's why I said I'm trying to escape news, and this one found me. The other news okay. didn't. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Kevin Spacey allegedly uh, sexually assaulted a 14-year-old boy who's an actor now 30-something years ago. Gross. And in response to that, Spacey said he doesn't remember it. If it did happen, he was, it was a drunken mistake. Also, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Which some news is reporting it as, oh, Kevin Spacey's gay now. Some, yeah. some other news are saying, oh, Kevin Spacey assaulted a 14-year-old when he was 26. Uh -huh. Some are reporting both. And then some are going that little extra step of, like, digging up his past and his parents' history. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, saying, you know, his father was a, a Nazi-sympathizing pedophilic monster. Huh. And therefore, you can see how this may have happened. Or some sure. bullshit like that. Sure. And the argument I heard was... If you filter things to distance yourself, agency of the parents, then you're distancing yourself, agency of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's this argument of free will and moral agency and how you have mm -hmm. to own it 100% for every single person. Okay. Well, you know what strikes me about that? Hmm. This whole thing. Mm -hmm. How the hell did y'all not know he was gay? I don't know. It's a, a, another open secret saying. type thing. I'm just saying. I think everyone knew it, but he liked to keep his privacy so no one could say it because he never openly came out until now. 
Oh, fair enough. Um, you know, and what do we really know about his past or anything? Yeah. What does it matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And, you know, he, yeah. Mm. It's coming out that a lot of men are, a lot more men are guilty of this than, I don't know. You know, and this is going to sound, I don't know how this is going to sound, so I'm just going to say it anyway. But I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, a lot of people meet people to date through work. Mm. So if you really can't flirt with anybody at work, are we absolutely dooming the species to die? Mm, no. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, sure, the, the rule book says don't fraternize, and then everyone does. Yes. So it doesn't matter what people say. The Yes. The structure's well, but, not there. Yeah. If you restrict it at work, then you could be like, well, you can't do. I mean, it's it's shady if a boss hits on uh, an employee who could possibly be fired by that person. That's, yeah. you know, if, if they are hitting on them and the threat is made that they could lose their job for saying no, then that's just fucked up. But Well, here's the other things, and I'll willingly get crucified for this one. I don't care. <laughs> Someone accuses Kevin Spacey of sexually assaulting him. Mm -hmm. And half the news is, oh, Kevin Spacey's gay. <laughs> Whereas Harvey Weinstein is accused of sexually assaulting her. Yes. He's a fucking monster. Yeah. <laughs> he can never work again. Firing from everything. You know what? You're right. <laughs> and one you are right. And one is um adult women who had the agency to not go to the room. And the other was a fourteen year old boy. <laughs> yes. No, you're totally right. I agree. It it's astounding to watch the dichotomy of the situations mm -hmm. <laughs> no i hadn't put it together like that mm -hmm. are we back off of topic or are we still on topic i think we're still morality? on topic because we're still on morality morality encompasses everything <laughs> it does and in our so, current society uh there's different morals for women victims genders. and men victims different genders different races different Mm -hmm. Sexuality, different everything. Yeah. I shouldn't say that because I hate to die, but since I'm white and straight, I'm going to die for saying that. So look, it was nice knowing you. Look, um, I'm, when I end up dead, I, I'm white and straight and male and cis. Like, I check mm -hmm. all the demon boxes. You, 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 do. you, you have the woman card. Do you have like like horns in a bandana? Or yeah. not a bandana. A headband. That's the word I'm thinking of. You need horns and a headband so that you can wear them around and, like, profess <laughs> your demonic nature. Yeah. I could get the whip and just start whipping myself. I'm there sorry. You go. I'm white. It's a flagellation. I'm sorry, I'm male. Yeah. Very important. It's a shout out to a YouTuber named The Amazing Atheist, TJ Kirk. He actually did okay. that as a skit. It was pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And I'm Christian too, and that also makes me evil. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it does. It makes me evil. You have that one over me. I do. But um, it depends on who you ask. Uh, yes, that is true. But if we're talking about like a social justice warrior, then uh, I hate to be, like well, they might. generalizing, but they would accept. Well, it doesn't I don't know. If mm -hmm. if we're because going the Christian with Christian church is against yeah. some of the Christian churches are against gay marriage. So I, I was gonna say if we're going with generalizations, the right wing will embrace you though. They will. <laughs> I'm not as afraid of the right wing as I am of the left. You're you're a white Christian <laughs> small business owner. <laughs> I'm like gold standard. Yeah. <laughs> you you are the epitome of morality to the right wing. <laughs> I am. I am. I even homeschool my children. That makes mm -hmm. me like a goddess, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Rather than really fucking lazy and hating pants. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Details. <laughs> to be a hell. Okay, above. so 
<laughs> yes, exactly. So the theme, of, so morality, like the Aztec saw no problem with killing people over their game, mm-hmm. whatever that basketball like game was or whatever. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so they played this game, and then the losers died. <laughs> Literally, blood Literally. sacrifice. Their blood was added to chocolate. Yes, for, for the rest but that was only if the ball didn't kill them, because it was apparently made of really hard resin. It was, yeah. And you could be like get your skull crushed in if you got hit hard enough with it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of amazing. Like, wow. It was, ba- and that was seen as morally acceptable. Basically, shot put basketball. Yes. <laughs> And I would like to um, propose that we have a slightly less uh, violent version of that in football. Because we know that American football is killing people. Mm -hmm. They don't live very long. They don't have full lives. They end up going into Alzheimer's and dementia and everything because of their brain damage. Which also ends up killing others, by the way. I think that the morality behind this is Mm -hmm. not that they're not dying immediately. It's that they're too expensive to replace, and it's a money thing. Yeah. I was going to say, on the same token, when you don't have the money and you go into the other direction of certain street gangs, uh, drug cartels, things to that effect, initiation Mm -hmm. is killing someone in many, many times. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> when lives are cheap, it's really easy to have the morality that we can do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, And it's right. uh, proving your worth to be able to kill. Mm-hmm. Which is much the same way the gladiators were. You proved your worth <laughs> by killing. That's depressing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but that's where the morality comes in is... Once you argue, argue it's immoral to kill someone, there's always that loophole that pops up too. Oh, what mm-hmm. about self-defense? Yeah. Which you could argue it's still immoral. <laughs> uh, yes. But most people don't. No. It's, yeah, it's like Quaker would argue that or whatever, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Um. so murder is an interesting one because, yes, there are like. I this this drives me fucking crazy. I mean, like, this is how bad because I'm swearing here. Mm-hmm. All of my vegan friends who are pro-choice. Yeah. You won't eat meat is honey. murder. <laughs> eat they won't eat honey. Fair, yeah, because it's a product of the slave labor of slave but bees. Killing I'm... a baby <laughs> is okay. And it's not that I'm condemning anybody for having an abortion. Mm -hmm. That's not it. It's the fact that they look at me and say, you're a murderer. But yeah, I will have an abortion. Absolutely. Like, what the heck? Oh, I have only one vegan friend who does not believe in abortion. Yeah. She's actually actively pro-life. And I'm like, thank you. The cognitive dissonance was killing me. Like, my ears are ringing from this. (laughs) Yeah, it's, so, it's like, very agree with her or not. At least she was like sound in her thinking. I mean, if you wanted to argue that, and I, I, I don't know why you would. I'm gonna put that addendum on there too. But mm-hmm. I, I am very good at devil's advocating. You are, <laughs> or advocating for devils. I guess I should say when I say it like that. That too. But you can say that the woman has a right to choose while an animal doesn't have the right to choose to die. They're just forced into it. Right, but does does the living person inside of them have a right? Yeah, it depends on when you consider it living. I mean, some of them have heartbeats. Mm-hmm. Isn't that alive? No, I mean, I agree. I, I'm, my abortion stance is possibly more limited than some other people's like Mm -hmm. i think the time limit cuts off as soon as there's form and organs and things to that effect yeah which is a very short window (laughs) it is a very short window but that's that's my personal cutoff i think it should be legal up to a point and that point is as soon as i consider it to be something live but that's my subjective opinion 
Yes. <laughs> Where the Catholics will say, oh, the time of conception is life. I tend to agree with that. Which one? That just... the time of conception is life. Oh, okay, yeah. But I'm still, like... I understand the social ramifications mm -hmm. of outlawing abortion. Yeah. And I don't think that we're at a place in our society, morally speaking, where we could outlaw abortions feasibly. Yeah. See, I think because brain and nervous like, system, you've waited too yeah. long. It's, it's like, well, I mean, what, like three I, months? <laughs> Maybe not, two? Not necessarily. Ish. They have a heartbeat at like seven or eight weeks. Yeah, but I said brain and nervous system. <laughs> Yeah, well. It's different. I mean, I know 20-year-olds who don't have a brain. Mm. So, but, yeah, but. We're being figurative. So, <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, like, I think it was in, um, was it Romania? Where they outlawed abortion for a little while? Oh, almost a generation. I don't remember the country, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so what happened, for anybody who doesn't know, and I don't remember the country, and I'm very sorry about that, um, but what they did was is they outlawed abortion completely, and you ended up with tons of children being neglected in orphanages and wandering the streets and, because their parents didn't want them. And then, it, was, it didn't change anything. And they just then, created a whole generation of miscreants. And then... 20 years later when they were adults you had tons of crime yes exactly because so environment matters it does one growing up mm -hmm. genetics also matter but it's well, like a 50 yeah. 50 thing but environment is more impressionable on the youth and when you grow up unwanted mm-hmm it's not good. That can trump almost any genetics. Pretty much. It, it... So, and and to be very fair, if you have you have parents who love and want you and are willing to fight to take care of you, your genetics are probably pretty good. Mm -hmm. and on the same token, growing up on unwanted doesn't guarantee bad. It doesn't no, trump it does all not. genetics. Some genetics will just shine through and that motherfucker will grow up to be a millionaire. That's absolutely, <laughs> totally true. And I agree. completely healthy and a good parent. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's outliers. But yeah, it's outliers. That's the, the thing. Trend. Yeah. You can't, you can't create models based on outliers. You need to just like, oh, look, they're there. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge you're there. Now let's move on to the other, the rest of the 99.99% of people. <laughs> yeah, just like you can grow up in the greatest house ever and end up being a shitbag. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, does, it usually doesn't happen, but outliers. No. Seriously. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I'm The murder thing, you know, I... I would, morality speak, morally speaking, I think if the Christians wanted to do something about abortions, then they should stop being tools and, you know, actually, like, support people because people are going to have sex. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to do. And if you're not going to give them access to birth control, yeah, you, you're not going to stop them from having sex. And it's like, it's like they're righteously, priggishly saying, well, you didn't keep your legs shut, therefore you deserve mm -hmm. everything coming to you. Mm-hmm. But whenever you say that, you have to take into account you're also saying, and your kid deserves to be growing up in a shitty environment. Yep. You're condemning two people, not one. Yep. And it's at that point where if the Christians are going to continue with the abortion thing. Which they are. Which they are. Please evolve on certain other aspects like sexual education. <laughs> you can't say you can't have an abortion and abstinence only. Yeah, because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> we are hardwired to have sex. Mm -hmm. We are hardwired for it. So you know, I mean, I, I have a couple of friends who waited till marriage and good on them. But it's only a couple of us that did that. It's oh, not many did that. Yeah. And there's because what. I mean, you know, the, I had one friend who had started having sex way too young, and she told me later she wished she'd waited. And that's fine, but I think she would have done better if she just wouldn't have started when she was 12 mm. and um, hadn't had, you know, multiple sexual partners before she was 18. Yeah. You know, if you, 
because it's a cry for attention, not necessarily a wanting of sex. Mm-hmm. So, but even at that, what's the let's say the people who started at fifteen, mm-hmm. which can be a wanting of sex and not a cry for yeah. attention. Yes. Be- yeah. So, like, my puberty sucks. <laughs> yeah. No, I was looking at her going like. My thought was not like, this is morally wrong or, you know, why are you doing this? It's like, wow, what is going on in there that you think that this is going to fill a hole? Because for her, that was what it was. But for other people, they really, they care about their partner. They want to do it. You know, whatever. I just had to suppress a joke. Okay. (laughs) Sorry. It's all good. (laughs) Just never mind. But yeah. Because I'm trying to be moral. (laughs) (laughs) That's the other part. Especially whenever, like, the, whenever you're pretty gray on the big topics of morality, murder, Mm -hmm. abortion, rape, Mm -hmm. etc. If those are questionable, whenever you get down to, like, traffic rules or business ethics... Yeah. Which I know ethics and morality, different things. Mm hmm. But let's face it, one rubs the back of the other. <laughs> mm hmm. So if the big ones are questionable, how hard is it to discern between the smaller ones? <laughs> I mean, I think it would depend on what your priorities are because I don't think. Mm hmm. Because it's not objective. There's no one right or wrong in this. No. In which. I love the objective arguments whenever these start, whenever this conversation starts to get dived into, because Mm -hmm. whenever you stop to think about nothing's objective, like, oh, yeah, but we can all agree the sky is blue, except colorblind people. (laughs) Right. We can all agree. My middle child would argue with you on that. Exactly. (laughs) Um, He he has many arguments about why the sky is not actually blue. Well, the sky is every color but. It's a function (laughs) of... Things, yeah, uh, yeah. I said, listen, more around there. I know that pedantic arguments with me, and it's like, just shush. I was gonna say, I know the refraction, I think it's refraction. I think, it's, yeah, I know the refraction arguments. I know the our eyes see reflections of colors, so we're actually seeing everything but that color, yeah, <laughs> which is an interesting one as well. Yep, uh. You can go into gravity and all of a sudden, you know, space becomes an issue <laughs> mm-hmm. because the rules change on where you are. Yep. Uh, my, my new favorite one, which I'm incorporating into a piece of a book. Okay. Is the concept of touch. Okay. Technically, you've never touched the thing in your life. <laughs> Yes. It's all I knew that. Repulsion. That's another one of those stupid <laughs> things my middle child told me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so filled with all the useless things he keeps telling me. Yeah. It's all just the electrons. Stop re- it. I want to be stupid. Repulsing against each other. Yes. And if you actually did touch something for real, it would. Certain atoms do touch each other. Mm-hmm. It happens in the sun. <laughs> And it happens in thermonuclear weapons. Huh. <laughs> That's what happens when things really touch. <laughs> gotcha. So not a good thing. No. <laughs> Which is just amazing to think that you've never touched anything. Yes. You felt a field. Mm-hmm. Which I'm playing with a bottle cap right now with edge ridges. <laughs> and it's like... Nope, I'm touching it. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Or if you're, I'm sitting in a chair right now, and it's like, nope, you're actually hovering. Very, 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 very slightly. <laughs> I'm a hovercraft. Mm-hmm. Everything That's is. That's so exciting. <laughs> if you're wearing shoes, your feet are hovering within the shoes, and the shoes are hovering on the ground. <laughs> it's Winning. so fucking weird whenever you start to think about it. I don't want to think too hard. Don't give me a headache. Nah. But... That's perception. That's yeah. where objectivity breaks down. Mm-hmm. It's, but no, I know the feel of silk. You know the impression of silk. <laughs> yeah. So there's 
objectivity is a myth. Even on a sense level, quantum physics breaks everything. <laughs> In so many ways. I'm waiting for the nine-year-old to get into quantum physics. Mm, well, he's, he's he hasn't discovered it yet. Halfway getting there. <laughs> Goodness. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, he hasn't discovered it yet, so I'm safe. Well, the electron but thing is happen. part of it. Just that you've never touched anything that's quantum physics. Okay. Well, he's still, like, he's still, mm, there's not there yet. So we're okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> he'll just break my brain when he does get there. Yes. He already broke my brain, but he'll break it more. Mm -hmm. So, um, something, so what do you consider, like, cross-culturally the norms that most of us share? Uh, how many cultures are we involving? Today. All of the, them? Mm, or yeah. major ones? Major, well. <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing is, mm -hmm. if, if we go with major ones, we share not a lot. If we go with all of them, we share fucking practically nothing. Okay. Because one culture will shun electricity. Uh, one culture will say murder in the name of a god is okay. Yeah. One will, or even within America, it's a culture can say murdering a doctor to save the lives of babies is okay. Which is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say infanticide is probably a thing, but it's like, no, we have infanticide and it's legalized. Mm -hmm. We have, we have, like, I'm going to say this wrongly and you can roll your eyes at me. Okay. There, There's real infanticide that's okay. Is there? Yeah. Where? I forget where it is. Okay. But I've, I've heard about it not too long ago. I might be making it up. I might be thinking of the past. The past, it was fun. Yeah, it was. You could get rid of the run of the litter. Yes, you could. <laughs> and it, it was the moral thing to do because that kid was going to grow up sick and weak. Yep. In a time where... They didn't have the resources. They didn't have the resources, and that person was just going to die later, sick and weak, and knowing. Yeah. So you could actually make the argument it was the better thing to do at the time. Which is horrible. It is, but, yeah. but, but true. <laughs> then you can also go, ah, oh, but you don't know. They could have cured cancer then and made everyone's lives better and been the next emperor of everything and... Maybe. Fucking. That's the Doubtful. thing. I heard a quote earlier, and I'm going to mangle the quote because I only heard it once and it was like in passing. But mm -hmm. I'm going to butcher it anyway. Okay. Just to get the meaning out. That the world is perceived through our paranoia and fantasy. <sighs> and I really love that idea because it's absolutely true. Yeah, I can see the paranoia. The, the fantasy is something to the effect of... I, I can see the fantasy easier than the paranoia, but the paranoia is pretty easy to see, too. But the fantasy of... Oh, that kid could have been anything. Oh, that oh, kid could okay. have been successful. Oh, I, I'm going to get that promotion. Oh, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> it's just... Okay. When you, you don't know. You don't. The worst thing in the world could happen tomorrow. And whatever that thing is, it could happen tomorrow. <laughs> Unless mm -hmm. it's, you know, like laser sharks or something. If your paranoia is <laughs> taken over that far, then I can't help you. Yeah. Sharknado, baby. Yeah. Like, certain things aren't going to happen tomorrow. But they mm -hmm. could. Even that's arrogant to say they're not. Well, my four-year-old prayed a couple of nights ago for comets to come and destroy the Earth, so mm. it should be well, coming then. soon. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we take turns praying, and that was – most of the time he just gives us gibberish, but he just mm -hmm. said that there was a giant rock that came to the Earth and went bang or something. <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm a little, mm -hmm. I'm a little concerned for <laughs> So good. He's four. Yeah. He wants to be a dinosaur when he grows up. Yeah. So. But that that got rid of the dinosaurs. This is bad. <laughs> yeah. Details. Yeah. Fair enough. He still doesn't know he can't be a dinosaur. So. True. 
I hate to break that one to you, but again, we will eventually. Again, we live our lives through a filter <laughs> of paranoia and fantasy. It, it never really goes away. Nope. Like it, it, it adapts itself, but it never goes mm -hmm. away. And it's so weird because I, I can have that day where that the fantasy filter strips out. Mm -hmm. And I just see things for exactly how they are. And it's the most depressing days in the world. <laughs> I think that would be true for anyone. I can, s I mean, I don't know. I don't live through paranoia. Oh, well, I do. If you'd ever <laughs> talk to me about car seats, you know I do. Because mm -hmm. I'm paranoid about car seats and people yeah. wearing seatbelts and whatever. Yeah, when, but, I, um, when I say paranoia, I am using the term that's mangled to base fears <laughs> yeah not the cia is out to get me right not full-blown paranoia but yeah yeah it, but i have good justifications for my car seats mm -hmm. so you know well yeah but but yeah. it is still a paranoia well not only that if so the full justification of the paranoia on car seats would be statistics right mm-hmm so if you were to adapt that exact same thinking to other aspects, you would be labeled a racist. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, it's things to that effect. Statistics are good. Yeah, but... but... <laughs> You start tiptoeing in culture and it becomes bad very quickly. Yeah. Grr. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's practical because everybody puts on a seatbelt now. Yeah. Which, I'm so. all for car seats. I think it's a good thing. Um, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I go through my own paranoias. <laughs> Well, I mean, if I was really paranoid, I just wouldn't drive. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd that go, that's because, yeah, if you look at that statistic, that, that's even way worse. Yes. You mm -hmm. die in a car quicker than most things. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I'm trying to think of some. So, like, uh... Spitting on people. Mm. Yeah, that's a weird one. Right? <laughs> because uh, that's an instant trigger for me to try to murder you. But I feel like that, I mean, maybe it's not, but I feel like that one would be fairly universally shunned. No, is... it's not. Really? <laughs> Damn I, it. I forgot who it was, but there was a culture, and I, I don't know if this is still in effect or not, but like, it was... It was a good thing. It helped cure disease and ward away evil spirits. <laughs> good Lord. Because you'd think it would be the opposite way. It'd be triggering a disgust reaction because it spreads disease. Yeah, but some cultures didn't or didn't don't know that. It that way. Or even know. Germ theory yeah. wasn't a thing until rel relatively not that long ago. Hmm. So, I... I I'm assuming that's changed, and it might be universal, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that some cultures out there, it's still a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. Gross. Mm-hmm. I, I can't think of a, a completely universal morality. I can't either. Which means it's not objective, because if it was actually objective, there would be things that would go across the board. Mm -hmm. Like maybe stealing? I think stealing might qualify. You know? Because absolutely no one wants to lose their stuff. <laughs> yeah? Apart from... But do all cultures have stealing, or is some of the stuff like, well, if it's yours, then it's mine? I don't think any culture has gone, quote unquote, true communist. Yeah, well, I mean, like in tribes or whatever. I don't think any ever fully developed full communism. 
Hmm. Which that's what that would be, right? Yeah. Everything belongs to the community. Or you look at things as a possession. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's ever happened. Okay. Or if it has, they died very quickly and no one knew about it. Yeah. I wanted to say urinating public, but India. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and with stealing the... I will, I will say... Even me as a kid, I justified this one with you can't steal from people, but you can steal from corporations. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Which was just my justification in my head to steal cigarettes after school. There you go. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't steal from stores because I could never have lived that down in my own head. Like, uh, that would have just killed me. No, I would have, like, I could not justify that, but I could steal, like, say my neighbor had um, cookies, and I really wanted them. Mm. I would absolutely sneak those out. <laughs> oh, so we had the opposite thing going on. Yeah. See, I, uh, to me, I could... But it was only food. It was only ever food. Yeah. That I would have taken. Well, see, me, it was... I, I would never steal from an individual because that's their things. Yeah. And while a store is the same way, I also knew that stores adjusted prices according to losses from theft. I knew that was built in to, for them well, to do. Well, isn't that stealing from individuals because then the individuals around you have to pay more for the stuff that they're getting? Nah. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Because let's face it, if if no one stole anything, those prices wouldn't come down. That is true. <laughs> Unless they're in competition with Walmart, then uh, maybe. I'm speaking directly of Walmart. They price in oh. loss. Huh. Okay. They also price in exactly how much they can charge to to undercut everyone and still maximize profit. Mm-hmm. Also, all the profits are from kids <laughs> making clothes, which we had this yeah. conversation before. We did. So, you know, until Walmart became – that's the thing. See, I, I couldn't steal from an individual because I don't know their morality. I know Walmart's immoral, <laughs> so I don't care if I steal from them. Or I didn't. Yeah. I still leave things on the bottom of the buggy and see if the cashier sees it or not. You are terrible. I know. I don't like Walmart. Apparently. <laughs> Police are going to get you now. Okay. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> you just admitted it. I admitted it to the past. They didn't catch me at the time. I'm pretty oh, okay. sure shoplifting, you have to be caught in the act. Huh. Ah, interesting. And I can always just say, I forgot that I put it on the bottom. Uh-huh. <laughs> Prove I didn't forget that time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Terrible. I know. I know. I am. And and I don't care. I don't consider myself immoral for being terrible. Fair enough. Nope. I could not from a store ever. And it was basically, like, just... Yeah. I was going to say. So I talked my mom into buying that specific food that I really wanted, and then I stopped. Yeah. It's pretty much Walmart, though. It was like jonesing for it, um, an addiction. I couldn't steal from a small business. That would be horrible. Here's morality <laughs> for you. I'm in ethics now. Okay. Here's ethics for you. All right. The sugar companies mm -hmm. telling everybody that <laughs> fat is the demon. Uh-huh. And we need to make everything low fat so that they can add more sugar to products to make them taste better when they're low fat. And we have this obesity epidemic and diabetes epidemic that is killing millions of people. And, How's that for ethics? And, and heart care epidemic. It yep. keeps going. It does. Low testosterone. Yes. Good Lord. It, I mean, yeah, cetera, is the weight the extra weight? Is it the hormones in milk or the sugar making kids fat that's triggering puberty 
in boys and girls early? I, what is it? I think uh, I think it's the soy in meat and things, the filler. The, mm -hmm. There's like a, from what I understand, there's a lot of estrogen in there. Yes. Yep. So how's that for ethics? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if <laughs> everybody dies from this. Mm -hmm. We're getting rich. Yeah. See, this is why I steal from corporations and don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> <sighs> they're evil. Mm -hmm. It's when you get that Robin Hood principle in, which, by the way, we need to discuss that one day. Robin Hood? Mm hmm. Okay. I have a new interpretation on Robin Hood. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah. Which, I don't know, I guess we could say it here. Sure. It fits in. Robin Hood was not about stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Okay. It was about stealing from the government and giving to the taxed. Yes. I I can agree with that. Because it was, it was the king. King was, was government. The, king. the government, yeah. And the king had stolen the money from the people to begin with through tax and escalating mm -hmm. taxes because they were at war. Yeah. So Robin Hood was stealing from the war fund <sighs> to give back to the people. Uh-huh. Which, uh, I'm still for that story. <laughs> I, I, just, <laughs> I just think it got misinterpreted pretty hard. Yeah, it's not the rich, it's the government. Mm -hmm. The government needed to be down with the king. I can't... Oh. Okay. Well, it wasn't so the king, it was the prince, fair, right? No, yeah, it's the prince. So I don't ever think about this movie except for thinking about the Disney one where Robin Hood is a fox. Me too. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so like that one's the one that's stuck in my head. And It was the best one. Let's face it really it. was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy! <laughs> my thumb is dirty. <laughs> Love that fucking movie. <laughs> Oh, okay. So anyway, um, I yeah. Absent makes the heart grow fonder, or forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. Anyway, um, I. So the government is is government in itself a moral institution? Not our government. I'm saying in mm -hmm. like generalities. Yeah, government. What small G government? <laughs> I guess you would say it that way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a tough one because it there's arguments on both sides as there always is. Mm -hmm. Because without, anarchy is difficult. It is anarchy requires intelligence. Yeah. From everyone involved. And yeah, everybody's intelligence, and they have to cooperate. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of belligerent people out there. Yes. And there's a lot of hurt feelings over small discretions. There's a lot of feuding. Mm -hmm. There's subjective morality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's, I think that's where government spanned from. It was, it came out of religion. Yeah. Because religion was the ruling class. Religion yes. started to fall. Government had to take the place of this is order. This is what we all agree on. <laughs> These are the rules. <laughs> Follow them or else. Mm -hmm. So it's moral in that sense, but as any body of people, it's absolutely corruptible. Easily. Very easily. Because it's <laughs> not actually a... It's not a machine. It's a body of people. Mm-hmm. So you're you're we are still dependent on those people following the laid out rules. Yes, which is and if they don't, which they won't, right? Not one hundred percent of the time. Then you end up with the corrupted system. Mm -hmm. Which it's so, it's gonna be corrupted day one. It's just how it works. Yeah, if you had a system of government that was not dependent on people at all, then I think it would be a moral. A probably possibly a more no oh, because the government because people you, would have to set the rules. Are you welcoming welcoming our AI overlords? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm totally good with that. Sign me up, man. You know your history of technology. I wouldn't be 
too excited. I will break the whole damn government all by myself. <laughs> the header, they would all just turn on you. Yeah. Well, you know, that's okay, too. Yeah. I don't need to survive the revolution. I'm good. Yeah, okay, fair. I've had a good life. <laughs> I can check out now. Well, see, that's the fun part. Is as soon as you have a rigid set of non-human rules, then every human has broke the rules, and yeah, then what good are they? We're all in prison or dead. Yes. And see, there there can't be an objective morality. No. Because we would all break it. Yeah. <laughs> Drug laws in this country. Oh God. <laughs> awful awful <laughs> completely immoral and I honest to goodness think that if it was more of a um, problem for the rich white boys that it wouldn't be quite as horrendous as it is now it is now a problem well, it for is the now, rich white boys I think that they're going to start changing the rules so I think the moral of that story is, is that they should have gotten the rich white boys addicted sooner I don't think they're going to change the rules. You don't? No. Not for the drugs that matter. Okay. Like, the, that's affecting the most people. Because, mm -hmm. like, all right, let's say they legalize marijuana, which should have been done. Should not never yes. been outlawed. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> yes. Not that it Although should have been am, done years ago. It I am good for regulations on that, on when you can start. Regulation's fine. Yeah. Age is fun. We age cigarettes. We age alcohol. We can age yes. marijuana. Yes, because it does affect your brain development if you're under a certain age. Yeah, I'm so. I'm fine with all three of those being limited to 25. I think mm -hmm. smoking, you get to smoke too young. You get to drink too young. <laughs> so the person who was stealing cigarettes in high school. Yeah, so I speak yep. from experience. It's you do too young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being a Puritan who's never done the things before. <laughs> yes. I am. I've never yeah. smoked a cigarette. <laughs> nah, nah. I smoked for 11 years. Yeah. And still vape. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only reason I haven't smoked a cigarette is I'm really freaking stubborn. Yeah. Which is a good thing. <laughs> Unless you have to live with me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not so much. <laughs> It, overall, I think it's a good thing. Stubbornness uh -huh. can be a virtue. It can be. Can. Can be a vice. <laughs> can be, yes. I can turn it into a vice, like... <laughs> Without even fingers. trying. Without even trying. <laughs> it can start as a virtue and transform into a vice. Yes. Yeah. All right, so you don't think that they're going to change the drug laws any? Uh, like I said, they might. Marijuana is being legalized in how many states now? Yeah, including if you count medical and decriminalization, it's over half the country. Yeah, <clears throat> the, they should have made medical legal everywhere. They should have. I live in a dumb state. You do. In the fucking idiots government. No, it's well, we're not all dumb. It's uh, our Senate passed legalization of marijuana, and then like half because the our our shits divided into two and then it's signed by the governor mm -hmm. so one half voted yes the other half said we're not going to vote on it and then the governor said he will never sign it huh. yeah perfect so we're we're one third okay <laughs> in this respect okay but so yeah uh he he said he would only legalize cbd oil which is okay good isn't that already legal do it isn't that already legal? It is now in Texas. It's legal now in all 50 states. It wasn't. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, I was going to say, I thought it was already legal, so that's why I was confused. Well, like, uh, it was legal most places, and then it was a gray area here where it, was, mm -hmm. it wasn't it was illegal, but it wasn't legal. And now, right. it, now it's just legal. Winning. Yeah. Which, yay for the people it helps and sucks for me. <laughs> Didn't help. Didn't do shit. That's that does suck. Yep. Went for insomnia and did nope. <laughs> uh it, it helped very slightly on panic attacks. That was about it. Huh. Okay. And it's awfully expensive for what it does. Anyway. Yeah. Uh so 
even if Texas does go full blown legal marijuana, which I don't see within the next ten years or so. Yeah. Also depressing. <laughs> Even if Ooh. even if those laws are changed, the the crisis right now is opioids. It's prescriptions. Yeah. It is. It's oxy Which they could have stopped with marijuana. Yeah, they could have. They could have find marijuana to be pain relievers, <laughs> and they could have just stopped the whole damn thing. Possibly, it's very possible. But then we're talking um, the 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 workings behind that. We, we just discussed sugar and sugar fucking people over. How do you think mm -hmm. pharmacy, big pharma, drug makers, how they react to all this? Yeah. To say marijuana is an evil, dangerous thing. Here's our pill that gets everyone addicted and runs lives and kills people. It's true. Results may vary. Consult your doctor first. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, I fucking hate those ads, by the way. Every ad that comes on with the fucking medicines. Ask your doctor. No, bitch. Don't ask your doctor. Listen to your doctor. Yes. If he's not saying this will help you, don't bring up, hey, will this help me? Mm-hmm. Because I saw an ad on fucking television. It was on Lifetime TV. It was perfect. Yeah. And then you read the bottom of the screen. This will cause <laughs> gums, gonorrhea, and erectile dysfunction. Mm. But it'll help you sleep. Maybe. Results Maybe. may vary. Results may vary. <laughs> I hate drug companies, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. So, yeah. it's The, the question of morality is very, very, very gray. <laughs> And by gray, I mean bleak. <laughs> Man, the question of objectivity is thrown out the window. Nothing's objective. It is. We're not objective. Not no. at all. Nothing is. Every decision I make that is even semi-gray mm -hmm. is me rationalizing my poor choice. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's, especially when it's down to two poor choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just which one can you argue better for yeah I'm stuck I'm I am personally stuck in this this situation that's a very horrendous gray area and we're choosing um, I can't go into the details but we're choosing the many over a one yeah and that's it's horrendous but it and is. well it is it is but it isn't somebody should probably go to jail for what they've done but yeah they're also being thrown to the wolves because mhm mm it benefits the many yeah but it it's kind of like that i don't know if we had this conversation on a podcast or offline but it was mm -hmm. that thought experiment on you're on you're on a bridge overlooking two train tracks <laughs> Oh, I remember that. A train is coming on the track it's on. One person is oblivious wearing headphones and can't hear you yell out to him, etc. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone tries to get out of this question. But you can either let the train continue and kill the one or throw the track and kill five people who weren't in the line. Yeah. Or you can switch it up. It's going to kill five. You can throw the switch and kill the one. And it's this question of, well, are you leaving up to fate? And then all this other things. And it's just not a good, there's no good feeling to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you personalize it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you say you're in a doctor's office with five other people. The doctor takes you back, says you're in fine health. And then kills you and harvests your organs to save the other five people. I hate that one. <laughs> Choosing the mini over the one. Yep. But since it's you, is it justifiable? Is it moral? Because a lot, most people will say they will kill the one in the first argument and save the five. But in the second, which is the exact same thing, by the way. It's just mm -hmm. a doctor instead of a switch. Yeah. 
But he's killing you. All of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, no, that's immoral. Can't kill me to save five people. Yeah. <laughs> but I can kill one to save five people. It It's so... Well, if the guy's <laughs> actually got headphones on and can't hear anything, then he's not paying attention to his surroundings. And Yeah, I'm saying, but all of them are. That's all of them incredible. have... Everyone has headphones and can't hear Everybody anything. has headphones. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one can hear you say, get off the fucking tracks, idiots. Why are you on tracks? <laughs> Fair. Yeah, so maybe they all just deserve to die. <laughs> That's my favorite interpretation so far. <laughs> I, throw, I throw the track enough, hard enough to derail it and kill them all. <laughs> right. <laughs> If you're all that dumb, then, <laughs> then you the moral of the story, children, is don't wear your earbuds to walk in traffic. Then you then you kill the train. I do driver. Oh, poor train. <laughs> the train driver. The driver of the train. What if there's passengers on? One there? of the five. No. <laughs> He's just there. Well, why isn't he counted into this? He's a person. He needs to be counted into this. Because his outcome's the, the same either way. <laughs> Let's make sure the doctor's the one. Yes. <laughs> and give the give the train conductor counseling afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> For having to run over someone who's too dumb to go. get off the train tracks. Yes. Okay. I, I can reduce this so it's not a train. <laughs> 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 I make it clean as possible where it's just you, six people... <laughs> Neither one or five are going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a weird question. It's a thought experiment. It's, <laughs> I, I would say it's for fun, but I'm probably the only person who thinks it's fun. Yeah, I I don't know. I would like to say personally that I would offer my life up to save five other people. That's not but an option. I don't option. know that in reality. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you're you're back yeah, in the is. doctor one. Yeah. Yeah. I meant the train one. I meant the train one wasn't an yeah. option. Yeah. So I think I would have an easier time saying to the doctor, like, okay, go ahead and kill me. Maybe. Than I would to sacrificing somebody else or five other people. Yeah. Because I feel like I have ownership of my own life and thus can make that decision. Mm -hmm. Versus somebody else's life. So. Yeah. This is my two cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you'll get the argument of... Oh, okay. Why well, haven't you given up all your worldly possessions and given it to the poor then? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying the arguments that will happen from that. Yeah, I don't know because I don't want to think about it. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how I rationalize my other choices. Yeah, which is so don't let me think about it because I don't want to be objective. Yeah, and I can't be. I can't be objective anyway. Nope. It's not possible. Nope. So I don't have to think about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're all horrible people and it's fun. Yes. Oh, that's such a relief. Which is why you say I'm a terrible person and I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I I'm not the one being deluded here. <laughs> <laughs> I like my delusions. They're pretty. They sparkle. Yes, but my my paranoia and fantasy does not extend to people being good of any way, shape, or form. But yeah, I would like that to be a thing, but it's not. I would, but and I'm also I'm I'm subjectively objective enough to admit that applies to everyone, including yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. See, but that goes back to the filter of paranoia and fantasy, and that's part of the fantasy, is that a lot of people believe people are inherently good. And they can be. Think, I don't think people are inherently... You know, you don't believe in evil. I don't believe people are inherently out to buck the rules of society so much that they would be kicked out of the society. Yeah. Wait. At least not openly. Speaking of which, I was listening to something earlier, and they kept saying evil. And mm -hmm. and in my head, I was just, as an experiment, replacing evil with disgust or disgusting. Mm -hmm. It worked perfectly. Did it? Mm -hmm. I can see that. <laughs> disgusting well, is also subjective, because I have caught people's vomit just mm -hmm. to save the floor. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Right. Whereas other people would be like, you did not. Uh -huh. 
Well, yeah, disgust is subjective and so is evil because they're the same thing. Which um, I'm now starting to develop a little bit more and I'm mm-hmm. looking into the opposite of disgust and seeing if that's love or not. Uh, I think it would be tolerance. Tolerance would be part of it. Also, beauty is a candidate. And not mm-hmm. not saying not not visually appealing beautiful, but a, a deeper meaning of beautiful, I guess you would say. Mm, you'll have to define that one a little more. Yeah, I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay. I, I know what it is in my head, but... Y- you can find Indeed something, yeah, because you can find something beautiful without it being visually appealing. Yes. As in, it's not a surface level type thing. Y- yeah. I'm just trying to find the words to nail that down a little bit harder, but I think it works. Okay. Tolerance and beauty. I don't know which one's going to work best yet, but it. I think the opposite of disgust. Or immunity. Immunity? Yeah. You know what? Because if, like, if we look at disgust as a pathogen thing, mm-hmm. being immune to it, yeah. you know, then you don't have to be disgusted by it because it doesn't affect you. Mm, true. So, I think all of those could work, though. It, it just depends could. on which interpretation you're going for. Yeah. So, like, because... I am immune to my children puking on me. Mm-hmm. I am immune to that. Yeah. It has happened so many times. It, it was disgusting. Mm-hmm. But it's happened so many times that I've had to <laughs> co- become immune to it. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I have no more disgust for it. Yeah. I have built up a tolerance and immunity. And I was going to say, let's face it. The, the first time it happens and you're disgusted by it, you are thinking, you little evil bastards. <laughs> oh, hell yes. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> so there's the link still works. Yes. <laughs> well, in my case, the first time I got puked on was like breast milk, and that is not as nasty as regular vomit. Well, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of get broken into <laughs> the hole being thrown up on. Yeah. But you... being pooped on, having poop on my hands, oh, man. <laughs> Wow. This is why I'm never having kids. Yeah. You know, there's just some things where I'm like, mm. so, but again, I've gotten to the place where I'm like, yeah, you have poop all over you and I have to wash you and touch your skin. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Let's go for it. See, my, my immunity is not built up to that <laughs> and I don't think it ever will be. Therefore, I will always think kids are evil, so I shouldn't have them. <laughs> Fair enough. Here's my rationality. <laughs> that works. It's okay. I'll have your share. Yeah. I'm completely fine with that. Everyone yes. else can go for it. Yes. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me any. No, it still bothers me a little bit. Yeah. I, I probably would take me another child or two before I would finally be like, all right, I'm done. I don't know. Good. I think there, there's certain things I don't think you can build an immunity to. That's where, like, true evil comes from. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, no. No, I don't think so. Like, no? it's not. No, it's. Well, you, you, you may build have an a point immunity. Now. No. Yeah, because I think that's still choice. Mm-hmm. Or being driven that way because of screwed up parents or whatever. But, you know, if you're, if you're disgusted by something enough or you devalue or dehumanize something enough that you can kill it um, without thinking twice, it's. It's selfishness. It's not. It's self-centered, and you you do not have to be that way. Yeah. So, even the sociopaths are not all murderers. No, no, not at all. So. Yeah, I th- I don't think so. I think that anything could be turned around potentially, mm-hmm. but you'd have to be willing to do it. So, are people who are serial killers willing to have their lives turned around? And is it worth the resources to try and rehabilitate them? I I don't think so, and no. So, incarcerating them until they get the death penalty, good for it. I'm totally okay with the death penalty, too, which is hilarious. <laughs> it really is. Because yeah. we're back to the whole murder thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. 
I do. I'm for um, expanding the death penalty. Yeah, I'm. I feel like you know they need to be. Well, no, I feel like our current culture of the death penalty, especially when you can have things like um, DNA proof or other. Th I know DNA is not totally, mm -hmm. totally, but we're getting to the place where it's going to be a pretty close slam dunk. Yeah. So when you get to those places, it can be like, well, I mean, they, they did it. This Their DNA is on the person. Yeah, but then you're going to have that one argument that they're the outlier. And killing the outlier is not a moral justification for killing the main problem. <sighs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, whatever. I'm not going to think too much about that because I would like to live in my irrationality justifying myself yeah i was gonna say uh, we all want to live in the irrationality that we don't need the death penalty and i can, oh, I think we do i can see the argument for that really yeah go for it i mean why well i mean we could just incarcerate for them all for the rest of their lives but yeah. it gets really expensive so does killing them is it expensive? Yeah, with all the legal shit you have to go through, it uh -huh. in, it ends up being in cases. I don't know how true this is. I just saw it in a report, so take it for what it is. It's okay. more expensive to kill someone than to incarcerate them for the rest of their lives. Huh. Okay. I don't know how true that argument is, but I have heard that argument. I I can't imagine that's actually true. I can't either. <laughs> it baffles but, uh, my brain to try like to connect to it. Is, yeah, <laughs> what I find funny, and also what I said, um, is that it's justice mm -hmm. for the survivors or the victims to have. It's justice. What's justice justifying justification? But, we don't look at justice as the same thing as I'm going to justify my choice. But then you can also argue that they don't get to choose what justice is also justice is keeping those people can... alive as long as they want as long as you can to torture them basically in prison it's kind of yeah i mean the families can to some extent like yeah. if they don't want the death penalty for the person they can ask for that they can ask for it if they might not get it they might not, but I, a lot of times they do listen to the families. A lot of times they do. Not always. Some judges are like, all right, we hear you, but this person sucks, so we're killing them. <laughs> I mean, there are some people who are so violent and vile that keeping them alive is ex dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even for the itself. people within the prison. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which, like I said, I'm, I'm actually in favor of the death penalty. I, like I said, I think it should be expanded. <laughs> Yeah. To like serial rapists, because why do we need them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, serial pedophiles, why do we need them? <laughs> Things to that effect. It's like, yeah. but I'm 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 probably a little too harsh. <laughs> well, maybe I no, I'm I'm not. I'm I'm pretty. But <sighs> on on uh, either of those issues. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm for that. I'm glad I'm not in charge. It's a, a weird moral equal thing there because it's like a, a, I'm for it, but I know it's not moral. Yeah. Even to my own morals, it's not something I should want, but I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't care. It's immoral. We're, we're going back to the I'm a terrible person. I accept that and I embrace it. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, like, the thing about pedophilia especially is that – like it um it continues it goes the trend. exponentially yes <laughs> it goes it it grows exponent that's what i'm thinking grows exponentially i don't know if it's exponential it depends well, on how many times know, I, mean, do it. I don't mean literally exponentially but you know what yeah, i mean like, yeah if you victimize five kids they're going to go out and victimize not necessarily many not necessarily, but a lot of them will go out and victimize a lot of people. I was gonna say, uh, I, I think the, not always. the way to word it, I don't, I don't think those are outliers. I think we find that people who go on to abuse have been abused. Yes. But those who are abused do not go on to abuse. <laughs> not always. Not. I don't. I don't even think the majority of people who okay. were abused go on to abuse. 
I would but need to see even, numbers on like, that. Like create more than one of you. Yeah, it's the potential. The, yeah. Seeding the potential is bad enough for me to say, yeah, you don't need to be here. Yeah. It's just um, no, go away. Mm-hmm. Once incarceration, twice by. <laughs> yeah. And I'm being. It's hard for me to say once incarceration. I can see that. That's the extent of me pushing Although, myself to care. Yeah, you put the you put a pedophile in jail, they get tortured. Yeah, which I'm a hundred percent for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because morals. Yes. <laughs> All right. On that cheerful note, yes. let's wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, because we're about to get into like a free will conversation that can be a whole new podcast. <laughs> it can't be. We'll have to hit that another night. Yep. So, all right. Until, until next, next week. week. <laughs> Bye. Later.